join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans, just make it Ireland. Okay, we're going to have a whistle stop tour of 99 great things to do if you're holidaying in Ireland. At number one, we visit the amazing Botanic Gardens in Belfast and check out this incredible Victorian glass house designed by Charles Lanyon. At number two, we look at one of the most interesting sites from a geological point of view, but it's also the home of Irish giant Finn McCool as well as being a stunningly beautiful UNESCO site. Excerpt number three visits the pretty towns of Strangford and Porta Ferry on the Ards Peninsula and we pass from one to the other on the ferry which is a great experience. Then number four looks at the iconic site of the Dark Hedges popularised by the HBO series The Game of Thrones. This tranquil scene is a view of the Silent Valley Reservoir in the mountains of Mourne near Newcastle and County Down. In film number 6 we get ourselves good old fish and chips at the seaside and eat them down at the beach while trying to avoid several menacing seagulls. Film number 7 takes us to Merlot Nature Reserve, again at the foot of the moors. This is a must for nature lovers. If Irish history is your thing then film number 8 visits St Patrick's Church in Downpatrick and we look at the tomb that is reputed to be the resting place of our Irish patron saint. From there we move to Castlewell and Forest Park, an incredible woodland area complete with lake and baronial castle. In stark contrast then our next film looks at the political murals of Derry's Bogside. This is a must for anyone interested in recent Irish history and the Troubles. Film number 11 visits the charming fishing village of Kearney near Portaferry County Down. It's owned by the National Trust and these quaint houses are rented out to make sure that there's a real community living here. Then we visit Queen's University Belfast, a beautiful university that's at the heart of the nicest quarter of the city. We head north again then to look at the Craft Village in Derry, a restored area within the historic walls of the city that's now home to cafes and craft shops. Our next light-hearted film introduces the poke van, as we say in Belfast, basically an ice cream van that's often found in our parks in the summer. Then it's back to Derry, this time to walk around its walls. Again this film is interesting for those with a general historical interest or even those with a specific interest in the Troubles. Film number 16 brings together a collection of Irish staycation ideas so it looks at a range of places in the north of the island that you might want to visit. In the next film we walk across the Derry Peace Bridge over the River Foyle. It's a physical link between the two religious communities of the city. Back to Belfast then for a visit to the docks and a look at this vintage warship, HMS Caroline. White Park Bay in film number 19 is a beautiful beach and wildlife habitat situated on the North Antrim coast and managed by the National Trust. One of our most popular films is this one in which we travel along the peace wall that separates nationalist and unionist communities in West Belfast. Film number 20 visits the Ulster Museum in the Botanic Gardens in Belfast. We look at the interesting exhibits but also discuss the curious mashup architecture. In the next film we not only visit the amazing Belfast City Hall but also this bank, scene of one of the biggest heists ever carried out in the UK and Ireland and perpetrated by the IRA. This amazing architecture you see in front of you is the new Titanic Museum, commemorating the famous ship that was built in this very dock before it sank on its maiden voyage. And if you like a ride in a fast car, try this trip up the beautiful Antrim coast. It's Ireland's Côte d'Azur. Politics again then, as we look at the murals situated in Loyalists Lower East Belfast. Again for anyone interested in the country's recent turbulent history, this is a must. By contrast, film 26 takes us to the gorgeous glens of Antrim. Beautiful woodland, waterfalls and undulating hills. And as we return to Belfast, we look at the seat of local government, the infamous Stormont Estate and Parliament buildings. More mythology then, and stunning scenery, as we climb to the top of Sleeve Martin to look at Unclock Moor, or the big stone that was thrown there by giant Finn McCool. Back to political murals again then, 
but this time we visit the Nationalist Falls Road to see a very different perspective than in our previous East Belfast film. Film number 30 takes us to the idyllic village of Ross Trevor in County Down, where we walk up the Ferry Glen. And the next film looks at the first of our visits to the graves of Irish poets and writers. On this occasion, Drumcliff Church, County Sligo, where W.B. Yeats is buried. Then it's back to the city as we look at the political murals, this time of the Protestant Lower Shankle Road. From urban grit to bucolic beauty, we then travel to Tullymore Forest Park near Newcastle, County Down, to bathe in nature once again in this stunning location. Film number 34 takes us back to Belfast to look at the other side of the Peace Wall. This is a follow-on film from our previous and it looks at the opposite side of the divide. This iconic bridge is the Hapney Bridge over Dublin's River Liffey. It's become almost a symbol of the city and it's very popular with tourists. Then we take a long walk along the North Down Coastal Path close to Belfast. This is a great place to escape from the city. One of our most successful videos is this stroll through the picturesque city of Galway. Check out its quaint streets and coloured shops. And Clonard Church and Monastery in West Belfast is not just beautiful, but it has an interesting recent history and connection to the peace process. Another place with a very interesting historical connection is St Stephen's Green in Dublin. Not only is it a beautiful park in the city centre, but it is links to the conflict with the British. In film number 40, focuses on these massive cranes in Belfast's former Harlan and Wolfe shipyard. We're almost halfway through our tour, keep watching, there's more great ideas to come, but in the meantime give us a like and if you've seen anything that interests you hit the subscribe button. Some other locations that we've covered include the stunningly beautiful Galway University, UCG, Carrickfergus Castle, home of the controversial statue of King Billy, the Garden of Remembrance in Dublin, site of this amazing sculpture of the children of Lear. And film number 44 takes a trip around the expansive Loch Ness. Galway's waterways, I call it the Venice of Ireland, are showcased in all their glory in film 45. And film 46 visits the site of the Ard Bow Cross, one of Ireland's most significant pieces of Celtic archaeology. Then we contrast that with a look at the Europa Hotel Belfast, Europe's most bombed hotel. And this dandy on the rock is Oscar Wilde, forever associated with this park in Dublin, Marion Square. Then on to Galway again to ask, is this an ugly cathedral or a beautiful one? I'd love to hear your comments on that. Film number 50 makes our first visit to Irish pubs. This is the vibrant Duke of York in Belfast. And check out this almost tropical look at waterfall at Glen Carr in the northwest of Ireland. Then again we have a compilation film looking at some of the great reasons to visit Ireland for your holidays. This place, I think, is the best pub in the world. Quite a statement. Check it out and you'll see it's the Crown Bar Belfast. And then we go to the historic monastic city of Glendalough in County Wicklow. Christmas also features in our films with this look at Belfast's impressive Christmas market. Maybe you've never had a pint of Guinness before, or you just want to know more about the black stuff. See film 56. And this is the grave of another Nobel Prize winning Irish poet, the amazing Seamus Heaney. And here we visit Air Square in Galway City again. I think it's Ireland's most beautiful city. And the spectacular cliffs of Sleeve League in County Donegal are the subject of film number 59. Then it's southeast to Wexford Town for a quiet early morning walk. Before visiting British Bay in film number 61, a monumental strand of golden sand. Film 62 explores the Northern Ireland Protocol in some detail and its historical context. And even our visit in the next film to stunning Horn Head in County Donegal can't completely escape the country's politics. The next film takes us for a gentle stroll along Dublin's Temple Bar, before a return to Donegal and the discovery of this secret beach location. An exotic location in number 66 as we visit Oscar Wilde's grave in Paris's Père Lachaise Cemetery, and then home to Trinity College and its beautiful campus in central Dublin. This pub is the famous Hootie Bugs in Donegal's Gaeltacht area. And here we are in Dublin's National Gallery. What an amazing collection of paintings and sculpture you'll find here. 
In film number 70 we visit White's Tavern in Belfast on St Patrick's Day. Great atmosphere. And then another beautiful Donegal beach, this time Nakala Beach, a real stunner. Film number 72 looks at Ireland's turf bogs and their sustainability. Now this Dublin pub, Grogan's, is a real must visit. It's like going back into the 1970s. Galway's medieval walls are the subject of film 73. They even extend inside a shopping centre. And if you want to test your knowledge of Donegal, see if you can recognise this mountain pass. Dublin's Grafton Street has some of Ireland's most high-end shops. Have a look here. And then we visit Fintra Beach in Donegal, another absolute cracker. The National Concert Hall in Dublin is perhaps the premier music venue in Ireland, but it also has a less known illustrious history. And here we see the fleet of fishing boats at Killybegs Harbour in County Donegal. In film number 80 we visit this amazing Dublin building that once was a townhouse and now is the Powers Court shopping centre. And then off to one of our three films shot at the Ulster Folk Museum, this one focusing on town buildings. This is the birthplace of the Rebellion and Declaration of Independence in 1916, Dublin's GPO. Number 85 visits the Ulster Folk Museum for the second time, this time looking at its churches and larger buildings. Film 84 asks the question if flags should be displayed in mixed areas of Belfast, while our final visit to the Ulster Folk Museum looks at farm buildings. The Dublin Bridge, named after Irish writer Samuel Beckett, is the subject of our next video. And then we visit Kelly Cellars, a pub in Belfast where the United Irishmen once met. This is Dublin's Christchurch Cathedral. We have a good look around, including the amazing crypt. And from one church to another, this one in Galway was visited by Columbus on his way to America. Here we have Donegal Castle. What would Ireland be without its castles? And then back to the calm of the beach. This one, Marble Hill Strand in Donegal. As you can see, Hugh Lane Gallery in Dublin is as beautiful as the exhibits that it hosts. And Film 93 goes exotic again, visiting Samuel Beckett's grave in Mount Parnasse, Paris. The first of our Ulster Transport Museum films looks at incredible steam trains. While Film number 95 visits St Patrick's Cathedral in Armagh, home of the Primate of All Ireland. The Ulster Transport Museum is again the subject of our next film, this time trams and buses. Before we head to Dublin Castle for a quick look around the grounds. Number 98 focuses on amazing old cars. And then we walk through Belfast's Cathedral Quarter in the last of our 99 films. I hope this has wet your whistle. If so, after liking and subscribing, please feel free now to explore some of these films. And thanks for sticking it out to the end.